You are a spark. A single flame. Burning through the day to day. Safely shelter your flame away, and it's just a case of waiting until it goes. Out. But when you share that spark, something heavenly happens. Fires start. Lighting up new pages, tearing through the eras and ages. As the fire that was once your simple solo spark rages. The glow of purpose spreading. This is legacy. This is God's kingdom coming, quicker and multiplying as we share the heat. Melting icy prison walls in cold, warring souls. From spark to flame to fire to furnace. The phosphorus of our calling causing the fruit of heaven to flourish and thrive. Lighting up hallways, homes and houses, terraces and neighbourhoods, communities, schools, streets and cities, reaching governments and committees, from prisons to palaces. Could it be? God's love blazing through every boundary and border, his beautiful global new world order. But it starts with a spark. I got a real big complaint. We got 18 locations and we value every person. And yet it's not enough. The problem we got is too many people are dying who don't know the gospel. Too many people in our world that are just waiting. They're waiting to hear. And even now, I think God has been like putting a, a willingness in our heart to say, are you prepared to do anything? Are you prepared to give it all? And we're going to be the sparkers. We're going to create a spark into the situation. And we're going to say, come on, burn, baby, burn. Don't tell me that you're unqualified to be kind to someone. Don't tell me you're unqualified to love someone. Or you're unqualified to care about someone. You need some sharpness back Freedom Church. You need to remember who you are, Freedom Church. We've been through a season, but right now God is saying it's time to sharpen, time to sharpen you. Sharpen your axe, sharpen it, because you're going out more than ever before. Let's go and light some fires, Freedom Church. Let's go and set some sparks flying, because God is calling us to the mission. Because we need to come in and penetrate the world with this gospel. We need to come in and realize who we are, who we're called to be. We believe that we're giant killers and he is who he says he is. We will not limit what the Holy Spirit wants to do. Hey, welcome to Freedom Church. We are so glad you chose to join us from all over the world. We are a global family of churches gathering in homes, venues, and online. We are passionate about seeing anyone, anywhere. Come to know life-changing relationship with Jesus. In a moment, our event will start. We will hear from around the world. Worship together. And hear a life-changing message of truth and hope. Let's do church! Namaste, Namaskara. It is so good to be with you today. Yes. Welcome to Church Online. Today is going to be absolutely amazing. My name is Luke. I'm Sophie and we are so grateful to be gathering with you That's today. Right. Whether you are joining in from your home or you're on your phone in your workplace, gathering yes. with family, whatever it is, we are so glad to be connecting with you. We That's want to right. say that if you are new or we haven't seen you in a while, connect in. We would love to get in touch with you. We would Absolutely. love to get to know you more. Drop us a message in the chat below or give us an email. Or if you are meeting with somebody in a venue or a home today, talk to someone, talk to a host team member. We would love 
to meet you. I agree, and Freedom India, I have to say, God is on the move. Come on. This 2021, God is up to something different. He's yeah. doing something new. Yeah. He's doing something fresh. There is something that is available for all of us that God wants to do in our hearts, ready for this year. And so as we're in this Upper Room series, as we're talking about the Holy Spirit, press in. Get ready for the download that God wants to bring into your life. And I know yeah. that there are people that are, are tuning in from Chennai, so a big shout out to you. And also everyone who's in Bangalore, we love you guys. Yeah. It's so good to be with you today. But we also know that there are numerous people tuning in right across India That's and right. Central Asia That's as amazing. well. It's so cool, isn't it? Yeah. I love what we get to be a part of. And so yeah, if you've been tuning in and you've been watching and you want to get more involved, I'll let you know that there is so much that you can be a part of. That's right. Community is so, so important. And so you could join one of our online groups. Yeah. We have something called an Alpha course if you're new to faith and want Do to learn it. more about this Christian faith. You can follow us on social media and keep up to date with all that is going on. But this is your invitation to say, hey, come and join the family. We hope you had an amazing new year, whether you were gathering with family or traveling, whatever it is, we hope that you had a great time. But with every new year is an opportunity to get vision, set goals, be different, do something different. It's an opportunity to press refresh, start again. And with everything that's gone on across the world, but in India, now more than ever is such a great time to press that refresh and look at this year with hope, with change, do something different, be something different. And we've asked our pastors and leaders around the world to share with us what vision they have for the new year and what they're getting up to in the time to come. We're believing for a church to go against the stream um, and in spite of intimidation, fear, doubt, all of that, um, action their faith, action their prayers and seeing the Holy Spirit move powerfully through that. Yeah, and we're also believing for a breakout in this kind of generous love that shapes the very society of Hereford and that sees salvation and life change because of what God does through us as a people. Hi church, as a family, this 2021, we are believing for a car. Amen. Come on, as a, as a campus in Bangalore, uh, we're praying for miracles. We're expecting miracles. We're expecting to see people healed and delivered and set free this year. We're also believing for restoration of uh, relationships, yes. marriages and families. That's what we're expecting for and believing in 2021. I'm believing this year that everyone in our church around the world will be able to live out and declare Luke 4.18, the Spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind to set the oppressed free. 2021, I'm expecting to see our fire starter churches double. I am expecting to see people healed in 2021 and I am expecting to travel to so many different locations to meet people that I haven't seen this year. Let's go 2021! Me. Coming into this year, I think we're facing more change and more questions than in any previous year. But something I know is we are going to see the goodness of God in 2021. Hey, I'm believing for a massive breakout, an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. We will see more healings, more breakthroughs, more miracles. We will see even people raised from the dead. That's what I have faith for. Believing for fruit of the impossible, because God says what is impossible with man is possible with God. For 2021 Freedom Rotterdam, we're believing for multiplication, we're believing for more salvations, and we're believing for lots of different nationalities to come into Freedom Church Rotterdam. And as a family, we're believing for fruitfulness, joy, and a new car. Yes. Hey Freedom Church, what I am believing for 2021 is that it's going to be a year of being passionate about the Kingdom of God. I read recently a verse that says that since John the Baptist, the Kingdom of God has been forcefully advancing. It's been bursting forth, but only passionate people take hold of its power. And this year, 2021, however it's going to look like, it's going to be about the passion that I have for the Kingdom of God. Come on! Wow, guys, so, so yeah, good. I don't know about you, but vision is so important.
important. And yes, I think that we're a church full of vision, aren't we? Yeah. But particularly, I also believe that personally, we need vision now more than ever before. Yes. You know, with this COVID season, with all of the uncertainty that's around us, we need vision now more than ever. Yeah. And so um, why don't you set some goals for yourself? Press in, ask God for some vision because we need this now. I need this now. We all need this. Yeah. And so if you're listening to this and you're thinking, well, actually, I don't feel like I have much direction or much vision. Why don't you start out today? Why don't you start this week by asking God, seeking him for some direction and some next steps for your life? Because I promise you, when you do, that vision will propel you, it yeah, will strengthen you, and it will yeah. bring fruitfulness out of your life as well. That's right. And show us what you're doing. True. Post it. Get True. it out there. Because I know that it can inspire other people. Agreed. And push other people forward to do the same. Yeah, I agree. And guys, we're in a new series at the moment called yes. Upper Room. Do you love it? It's been so good. I mean, seriously, so good. And i got to say, guys, um, there is a reason why we're talking about the Holy Spirit at the yes. start of 2021. God has an agenda. There's something that he desires to do. He wants to bring right. freshness into our lives. He yes. wants to bring new and we as a church believe that 2021 is going to be a stronger year than 2020 which Amen. making that a defiant stance yeah, we are. the best way that's going to happen is the newness of the holy spirit that he that's wants right. to fill within our lives and pastor gary brought an astounding word last week talking yes. about the holy spirit as our champion as our enabler as yes. our comforter and i've got to say pastor gary is bringing a word today that is going to be life-changing the holy spirit wants to do something powerful in your life today church so get ready for that yeah come on another part to that message last week is when pastor g talked about that the holy spirit is preparing the church for when jesus comes back right. and we cannot underestimate the power of the church in this season to bring hope to people within our cities and in our communities and before we go into a time of worship and we go on to hear this week's message we have a creative to show you about what the church is, who the church is and why we do what we do. God wants to move through us and in us as the church in this season. The world needs this. It's what we are meant to be. Humanity knows they need it and have always tried to create it. Clubs and bars, societies and stadiums, temples, streets and associations. We are souls that need community, a common cause and a place to belong. But this is God's design, the church. But you've probably only seen a shadow of it. Humankind took it and warped it. Religion got hold of it, shut the door and put a lock on it. But please see it for how it was meant to be. Turn misunderstanding upside down Wipe clean your history. It's not the place in which we gather, but it's those that do, whether two or two thousand. It's those that have become the living stones, building the all-inclusive kingdom of God. It's not the event, it's the people on the mission. In fact, God never even called it church, and those in it, Jesus never even called them Christians. This is beyond categories and denominations, boundaries and boxes. We are simply followers, trying to place our footsteps on that beautiful, narrow path together. People of the way, the ecclesia, the gathering, the community, in communion with the greatest commission, the good news distribution. Not for the sake of ourselves, but for the sake of everyone else. We meet, we catalyze, but we don't remain inside the walls. Using earthly gifts for eternal purpose. Shaping culture with selfless passion. Flawed and faulty, yet by grace we found God. And now we find our purpose with people. And this is the place for every person. Anyone, anywhere. The world needs this. This is what we are meant to be. Hey, it's great to be joining you wherever you are around the world. Come on, we're going to worship together. When you get to your feet, come and bring a sacrifice of praise to our God right now. Come on, church. Let's go.
out on the water and leave the boat behind. Chase down your heart's horizon towards a perfect life. In it, you promise I will find. I won't just ride this wave, but leap out on the water and leave the boat behind. Chase down, come on. Chase down your heart's horizon towards the perfect light. In this, you promise I will find. You ready to lift it up, Chase? at the start of this new year I want us to sing these words out over 2021 and the year ahead that we will go we'll walk out on the waters where he leads us so come on church everywhere around the world would you just pray where you are commit your life this year to him that you'll go where he calls I will go. I will go where you will call on the water where you need me. I will go where you call on the waters where you
I am the forever, I am the amen, I am your taste of heaven, I can make you dream again, just watch what we can do. Welcome everyone. Wherever you're joining from, I'm so excited about this word that I'm going to share with you today. You need to get ready. It's the new series that we're in called The Upper Room, all about the Holy Spirit. In fact, on part one, I came in and just shared about who is the Holy Spirit because there's so much confusion. There's, there's so much misunderstanding about who the Holy Spirit is. And if you miss that, please catch up. Do you know what? When we understand more and when we look to study and we come and say, what does the Bible say rather than what we've experienced? Do you know what? That is the best way to build a foundation. And so we too, we're actually going to be looking at the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And I'm excited about this because again, there is perhaps fear and misunderstanding around the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So we're going to dive into scripture and I'm going to be sharing again a foundation of scripture to build truth upon. But I know that God wants to speak. Even right now in your home or wherever you are in your gathering, the Holy Spirit is present. You know, even just preparing this message, the Holy Spirit was just speaking to me and saying, I want to come in and move. I want to come in and move in people's homes. I want to move like never before. And although we may be in some form of lockdown and um, there's some restrictions over our lives right now in our world, the Holy Spirit wants to break out. He really wants to break out into our life. But he's saying, are you desiring me? Do you want to know me more? And so we're going to look at what is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You see, I was saved when I was 10 years old, but it wasn't till I was 15 years old that someone told me about the Holy Spirit. I didn't really know who the Holy Spirit was. And when someone explained to me that he was the one that came and brought power to live that Christian life, I want to know who he was. But I was uh, a very um, introvert young person. I was I, I didn't want to be seen, I was quite shy, and I didn't want to come out front. So when I heard about being baptized with the Holy Spirit, it freaked me out. And I just want to say this at the start today, because I believe I'm speaking to some people who may be fearful of what the baptism of the Holy Spirit really means, and can I really trust him, and what happens if I, you know, want to request to be filled with the Holy Spirit, and I'm asking for it, but I'm a bit scared about what's going to happen. I want to encourage you. The Holy Spirit, he is a gentleman. The Holy Spirit doesn't come into force. I have noticed that it's people who come in and they often done a bad job of forcing people to be filled with the Holy Spirit. He is not like that. He is here today and he came even as an introvert teenager. He came and he said, look, just trust me. We're going to take a step at a time. And I've also learned that everyone's experience of being Baptizing the Holy Spirit is unique and different to you. He understands you. And so will you right now begin to trust him as I come to scripture and share with you who he is, but also what he wants to do through the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So first of all, it is the promise of the Father. Baptism of the Holy Spirit is a promise. It actually says here in Acts 1 verse 5, for John baptized with water. We know that. Most Christians agree upon that because it's in Scripture. But in a few days, he says, you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So he's talking about, yeah, you know about water baptism. But I'm telling you that in a few days from now, Jesus says, you're going to be baptized with the Holy Spirit. And first of all, this promise of the Father that is coming, it's all about the distribution of who Jesus is. Because he said, if I don't go... You know, you want me to stay, don't you, disciples? And they were all there saying, yeah, we want you to stay, Jesus, we're going to miss you. He said, yeah, but if I don't go, I can't send the one, the promise. I can't send him to you because I need to go to be able to send him. And the thing then was, Jesus was, could only really be in one place. He was the son of man. He was like in one place. 
But when he went, he brought a distribution of who he was through the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And this is what happened. This is what the gift is. It says in Luke 24, verse 49, I'm going to send you what my Father has promised. See, it's a promise from the Father. But stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. Now, when I think about that, clothed with power from on high, you know, I came out early, I put my jacket on because it's a bit cold here in the UK, and I put my jacket on. I clothe myself with my jacket. It's something I put on. And in scripture here, he's saying, look, you need to get ready. You need to wait because I'm going to clothe you. And this is like something that is so powerful because he's saying, you're going to receive power, but you're going to be clothed. You're going to know that you have it put on. And in fact, scripture says that there are many gifts of the Holy Spirit that were also given to us. I like to think it's like... um, you know, uh, Iron Man, Iron Man has a suit he puts on and like suddenly he can just do these extraordinary powerful things. How much more are we clothed in power when the Holy Spirit comes upon us? And that's why I'd so desire for every believer to know what it is to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. Secondly, this is an interesting one. It says in scripture that being baptized in the Holy Spirit is a distinct and separate to conversion. Because many people will think, oh, well, when I got saved, obviously we come and we, you know, we receive uh, Jesus as our Savior. We know the love of our Father. And if the Trinity is the Trinity, the Holy Spirit is part of the deal. It's like an all-in three deal. And uh, it's like, well, you know, when, when I got saved, that's when I received the Holy Spirit. And many people Many, uh, you know, Christians will think that, well, I just received him almost by accident or as an extra blessing when I got saved. But it says here in Scripture, you know when you are baptized in the Holy Spirit. It's not an accidental thing. You know when you are filled with the Holy Spirit. In Acts 8, verse 15 to 16, it says, when they arrived, they prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. Interesting thing is, just a few verses it says these particular people responded to the gospel and got baptized. They were saved. They were baptized. But then, you see, it picks up and it says, we prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit had not yet come upon any of them. They had simply been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Here we see very clearly, it wasn't something that all happened when they received the gospel. It didn't just happen, but there was something about being baptized in the Holy Spirit, being filled with the Holy Spirit was a separate, a distinct experience. It was something that came upon them. I want to put it to you this way. I believe that when we come and put our trust in Jesus as our Savior, we all have an indwelling of the Holy Spirit. He indwells us. He is there within our house. It even says that we're like we're described as a temple and it says we're a temple of the Holy Spirit. So think of a temple that has an outer court and an inner court. It has like different rooms. And the same way, see, we all have an indwelling of the Holy Spirit because you can't separate the Trinity. But it's like, think of a house. It's like having the Holy Spirit come and say, hey, we're going to park you up here in the front room, but please don't go anywhere else. I believe that he indwells in our life, but infilling is to do with a will. It's to do with us desiring him to come in and fill our whole house. So I think there's confusion for many of us that we think just because, well, he's indwelling, but is he infilling? Have you given him room every room to him? Have you given him every space of your life? Have you given him every area? Have you given him the attic in the roof? Have you given him that, that room in the back? See, when we're baptized with the Holy Spirit, it really is engaging our will with his and saying, I desire you, Holy Spirit, to fill me. And he comes to fill. That's different to indwelling. And that's what he wants to show us because he wants all access to our lives, but it comes through a decision to say, I want you to fill. Thirdly, there is a gift that comes with being filled with the Holy Spirit. And this is what perhaps freaks a lot of people out because they don't understand it. And that gift is the gift of speaking in tongues. And it's interesting that this 
heavenly language, this sort of, sometimes to many people, it would seem just garbled words that are unknown, is, is like, I can't really understand that, that God takes this member of our body, this tongue that can be used for bad and harm and destruction, and he makes it holy through a tongue that he gives us, a language. And what it means is, speaking in tongues is a language, a heavenly language that we can engage with God, and it says even through it, we can be edified, that our soul is edified. I've been in some dark situations in my life where I didn't even know what to pray but through using the gift of tongues, I was able to engage and call out to God and pray to God, and he edified my soul. There is a gift that he has given, and that's why I want it for every one of us. But we need to desire it. It says in Acts 2 verse 4, all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. See, he's the enabler. He's the one that comes and gives us this gift of speaking in tongues. Another interest, interesting thing about speaking in tongues is it's an ability that's beyond our intellect. You know, we, we just love being in control as human beings. And I think many of us really struggle when we begin speaking in tongues. We think, oh, you're just, our mind says you're making it up. You know, it's rubbish. It's just, it's just garbled rubbish. And, and yet there's something about, no, I'm trusting that he's given me a gift. And as we allow him to use our tongue, we speak in this heavenly language. And what it does is it switches from our intellect to our heart and our spirit. And what happens is we communicate and we speak and we bring glory to God. In 1 Corinthians 14, verse 14 to 15, it says, for if I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays. I'm praying in my spirit through my tongue. But my mind is unfruitful. So what shall I do? I will pray with my spirit, but I will also pray with my understanding. I will sing with my spirit, but I will also sing with my understanding. It says that we're able to come and use our mind to pray specifically at times, but there is a gift that is given us that connects to God in a different way. It even says that there are spiritual mysteries that we speak through tongues. And this is deep. 1 Corinthians 14 verse 2, it says, For the one who speaks in an unknown tongue does not speak to people, but to God. For no one understands him or catches his meaning. But by the Spirit he speaks mysteries, secret truths hidden within the earth. I mean, that... That, that takes a lot to take in. But God, I want to say to you, if you're a Christian and you have faith and you believed, right, that the Son of God came as a baby, he was born in a manger, he came and grew up and then died on a cross and he went and defeated death and now there's an empty tomb, we're involved in a supernatural faith. Is it any surprise that the Holy Spirit would give us a gift of speaking in tongues that you can't quite understand? And this is where the Holy Spirit's saying, no, you don't need to understand. I want to bypass that and I want you to trust me that I'm going to take and I'm going to give you a heavenly language that is holy. The Holy Spirit wants to move. And I know I'm even speaking to people today that have struggled with speaking in tongues. Maybe you were prayed for, for the baptism of the Holy Spirit, but you just got this struggle and this barrier as well. I, I've never spoken in tongues and it just feels like I make it up and it's difficult. And because of it, you've stepped back from who the Holy Spirit is because you felt somehow that maybe I'm a failure in that. But I've come to tell you that's not true. In fact, I want to come and tell you, don't let speaking in tongues be a barrier. I, I've just seen sort of over the years that many people who are filled with the Holy Spirit says that's a sign that we can speak in tongues. But it doesn't mean to say that you're not filled with the Holy Spirit. I believe being filled with the Holy Spirit, the baptism of the Holy Spirit is a gift that is promised to you. Maybe your journey of speaking in tongues might work out over the next weeks, over the next months, over the next years. Do you know what? <laughs> Don't let that hinder you coming to the Holy Spirit and saying, I'm open. Will you come in? Will you fill my life? Will you come in and baptize me with the Holy Spirit? I believe he wants you to receive the gift of speaking in tongues, but don't let that hinder you or bring doubt to you to think somehow you haven't received him. Some of us instantly can speak in tongues, but even today, I believe there's faith in this message. As I speak to you through the camera, there's faith stirring you saying, do you know what? 
you're going to speak in tongues. Some of you are going to speak in tongues for the first time through this series. Some of you are going to get a breakthrough. But don't use that to measure whether you are filled with the Holy Spirit because he has said, if you come and ask, you will receive. And the Holy Spirit is coming even right now. He's saying, will you ask of me? Will you desire of me? I so want to come into your life. I want to fill your life. I want to baptize you. I want to come in. I want to ask you, who may receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit? Some people will, will think that perhaps it was just for the disciples. It was just maybe for the New Testament days as the church was getting going. And, and people have used it. I think it's an excuse because it's hard to handle that baptism of the Holy Spirit is for today. And it's something that is supernatural, that it is powerful, that it's going to come on. It's going to shake your world and bring holiness into your life. Some people, are, oh, I think that was for the New Testament. I think that was for the disciples. That's religion that does that. It robs you and it denies the power of the Holy Spirit. It says in Acts 2, verse 38 to 39, Peter replied, repent and be baptized. See? Every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, there's the gospel, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. You will receive the promises for you and your children, and for all who are far off, for all who will call upon the Lord. Is that for some? No. Is it for a certain time? No. It says for all, for all, for your children, for all those that are far off, for all those says this is the promise this is the gift for those who call for god to move and that's what he's doing right now do you know what it's not around how what a great christian you are how long you've been a christian in fact these these people in the new testament they literally they they chose to believe in the gospel in jesus as their savior and often immediately they were then baptized with the holy spirit they didn't know all the scriptures they didn't sit on a uh, like a, a plan for six months before they come and say well you know my life is looking pretty tidy right now they came ready and raw and today no matter where you've been whether you've been a christian for many years and you've just perhaps not been away you've neglected the holy spirit maybe you're a brand new christian the holy spirit the gift the baptism of the holy spirit is for you and it is a separate and distinct experience from salvation. It is about being clothed with power. Who doesn't want to be clothed with power to live this Christian life? We need it more than ever before. So right now, I'm going to move into what is the impact? I'm trying to ask questions today because these are questions that a lot of people ask, and I'm trying to bring some answers for you based in Scripture. So I'm going to talk about what is the impact then of being filled with the Holy Spirit, being baptized in the Holy Spirit. What can I expect? These are things that you can expect, just some basic things. First of all, to God. You can experience a greater depth of his love and his fatherhood than ever before. When you get baptized in the Holy Spirit, and I remember it, when I was filled with the Holy Spirit, I started to see that God accepted me unconditionally, that he loved me unconditionally as a son. I hadn't had that revelation before. Secondly, to his word, there is an impact upon his word that suddenly it comes alive and there's this re greater revelation than ever before of his word. There is an appetite, an ability to hear God because that's what the Holy Spirit does. He's a revealer of truth. He reveals truth and he does it through God's word. Thirdly, to the Holy Spirit, he becomes more sensitive in your life than ever before. You'll find that he will bring conviction to your life around things that you thought, oh, well, I'm sure that's fine to, you know, to do or to say. And behavior as a Christian is like before that was okay, but now it's like there's another standard. That's why he's called the Holy Spirit. And he's here and he's, he's coming and saying, no, I, there's a higher call. There's more of Christ. There's more of Christ I want to reveal to you. And so this, this conviction and this guidance and a sensitivity of who the Holy Spirit is more prominent. And then lastly, to the world, he gives each of us a boldness to take this gospel, to take this message out to the world, a boldness. I, ca I can't emphasize this enough. There is a boldness that I found at 15 years old, that even though friends would laugh at me and they would say, there's the, there's the Christian lad, and they would poke fun. There was something about it. Now I've got this message and I can't keep it inside. And there was a boldness that he gave me because that's who the Holy Spirit, he clothed me with power to say, no, I've got to speak this truth. And many of you today, you, you want a boldness to be able to take this message out and it's needed now more than ever before. 
So then we move on. How can I receive the Holy Spirit? A simple way of receiving, and I really hope that through this teaching I'm sharing with you, it's practical. I'm not trying to make it emotive and, you know, trying to like hype things up. I'm simply laying out his truth. Because when we come to his truth in scripture and we look and we say, look, this is what the baptism of the Holy Spirit is. This is what the gift of God is. This is the promise he sent. Then I'm just going to simply lay out, how can, how can you receive today, wherever you are, if you're sad at home, if you're, you know, listening to this on the go or in the car, wherever you, how can I receive the Holy Spirit? And these are some things I'm going to show you right now. First one is you've got to come to a place of understanding. You cannot earn this gift, the gift of the Holy Spirit, of being baptized in the Holy Spirit. You cannot earn it. You can't gain it. In fact, it comes purely, the only condition is that we come with a heart of repentance. It means, that doesn't mean perfect. None of us are perfect, but what we do is we come and we say, I turn away from the Lord. I'm looking to follow Christ. I'm looking to follow him and make him my Lord. I'm looking at not continuing in sin. Even when I fail, Lord, forgive me, I repent. It's really about living a life of repentance. And if you want to receive the Holy Spirit today, because this is what we're going to do, church, in these extraordinary days that we're in, we can't get around all of our churches and our people to lay hands on you and pray for baptism in the Holy Spirit. But nevertheless, we're going to do it through this video. We've never done this before, but I just felt the Holy Spirit saying, oh, do you think I'm restricted? Do you think that I can't move? Do you think I can't fill my people? Do you think that somehow I'm restricted to move in this whole lockdown and this, this panic around the world? No, I'm more than ready. I am actually more able than ever because he is attracted to emptiness. He's attracted to restriction. He comes in, he says, oh, I want to break out. And so if you have faith right now, engage with that because I'm not just gonna lay out principles here today, we're actually gonna move into a moment where we can come and say, Holy Spirit, would you fill me? So that first one is, we gotta come with repentance. And if you need to do that today, the first step is, hey, I wanna come in, I, I wanna, I, maybe I need to recommit my life. Maybe I've struggled and I've messed up, but today I repent and I come to you and I say, forgive me, because he is holy. He's the Holy Spirit. So we, he doesn't come into dirty glasses. He comes into washed glasses. How are we washed? Through the blood of Jesus. That's what washes our lives. It cleanses us from sin. But we've got to come in and we've got to repent and say, I'm following you. Number two is we've got to make sure that we have forgiven others. I have seen that this has been a big barrier for many people to speak in tongues, many people to receive the fullness of the Holy Spirit, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, is because they're still holding on to hurt. They're still holding on to unforgiveness. And we know that this is a key thing. We've got to come. And right now, if you want to receive baptism in the Holy Spirit today, you can lay down that hurt, lay down that offense. Maybe that person that hurt you so badly, you need to come and say, I forgive them. I release them. I forgive them. I release them. Not because you feel like it, but because you're determined to make a decision and you're confessing and saying, I release them. Because then it opens up and allows the Holy Spirit to come in. Thirdly, and this is huge for all of us, is if you want to be filled with the Holy Spirit, you're going to need to surrender to him. An old word is to yield, is to give way. It's like to say, I yield, <laughs> I surrender. What are we surrendering? Our control. We're surrendering our control because we love as human beings to be in control. We love to know what's going to happen, how it's going to look, um, what the end's going to sort of appear like. And we, we like to be in control. But I have learned with the Holy Spirit that it is an absolute trust in him to say, I trust you. I trust you to move and I give over control. And that might be even why some of us have become scared when we've seen someone prayed for and maybe they've fallen on the floor. Because this is an impact of 
being touched by the Holy Spirit is that maybe even today, maybe when we pray at the end, you might feel emotions that come into your life. And I want to say, you need to trust the Holy Spirit. Maybe he wants to touch your heart. Uh, Where there's been hardness, he wants to come in and make it tender. Maybe there's something he wants to move. Maybe he wants to cause joy in your life and laughter. Where there's been sorrow, he will do it. He will move. He will move. Even right now, he's moving in your life, you see. But he's saying, will you trust me? You've got to give up control. You've got to stop pushing it down and saying, oh no, I've got to, be, I, you know, I've got to make sure I'm all in control. No, God says, come in, let my Holy Spirit move through you. And even when, when perhaps we see people fall over or, or, or be touched by the power of the Holy Spirit, he's doing a work. And if he's doing that in you, I know when we were at the cave, that happened to someone whilst we were at the cave and happened in the kitchen and they they were just impacted by the Holy Spirit because he's real, he's real. And we need to be open for him to move because he wants to do a work within us. And it's around surrender and trusting. But the same way, I want to say to you as well, if we pray today and you say, I want to receive the Holy Spirit, fill me, Holy Spirit, I want the baptism of this Holy Spirit that's going to change my life. If you don't feel anything, it doesn't mean to say you have not been filled. You know, when I came forward and I was prayed for for the Holy Spirit to be filled, I didn't actually feel anything. <laughs> nothing happened to me, nothing strange. I, just, I was there just saying, I need you, Holy Spirit, to live this life. I found, though, over the coming weeks, this great intimacy with him the great boldness that started to come upon my life i started like finding that there was like these these strengths within me and the promise was within me but at the time i felt nothing and so i want to say to you do not measure whether the holy see you've got to measure it by the word and he says if you ask you will receive if you desire you will receive he's not going to force himself on you so it's how much do you desire So the last one is, point four is, we just need to simply ask. We need to ask, as it says, and receive. We need to have the faith to receive. We need to say, I want you, I desire you, Holy Spirit. And when we pray, there needs to come a response from our heart, say, I'm desperate for you. If you're not bothered or not desperate or doing it as a test and saying, oh, okay, let's see if it's real, you're probably not gonna experience the fullness of the Holy Spirit because faith needs to engage. And I have noticed that Jesus often talked about desire and about thirst and about coming after me. And right now in this season that we're in, where he's gonna move probably is where the greatest lockdown and the greatest pain is. That's what the Holy Spirit does. Where there is great pain, great loss, great restriction in people's lives, he's attracted, he like comes in and he's saying even right now, see what I'm about to do. So I'm gonna pray right now and i'm going to ask you to join with me if you want to be filled with the holy spirit we're going to do this through video he is not restricted he's able to move right now but you need to be serious about this you need to want it you need to desire it and thirst after him the holy spirit he is so close to you so i'm going to lead you in a prayer and when i finish praying this prayer i'm going to pray over every one of you for the holy spirit to move to invite him to come I'm going to ask him to come because he's promised he will come. He's going to come in power. I'm going to ask Dave to come in and he's going to minister and he's going to come in and worship and speak over us as we allow the Holy Spirit to minister to our hearts because I believe there's healing today coming. I believe that when he comes and fills our lives, he restores things. I believe he comes and he empowers things. He comes and repairs things. The Holy Spirit just wants to do so much in our life, but he's saying, Do you want me? Are you desperate for me? I want to move. I want to clothe you with power today, church. But it starts with every one of you individually. Will you trust me, the Holy Spirit says. So I'm going to pray right now and I'm inviting you to join me in this prayer right now as I pray. And then afterwards, allow the Holy Spirit to move through this moment of ministry in Jesus' name. So Holy Spirit, I come to you now And I desire you so much. In fact, I come and I repent of the sin in my life, of anything where I've gone wrong or what I've said. I come now and I say, sorry, will you forgive me because of the cross? Forgive me. I repent and I look to you right now as my Lord and Savior. 
I come also now and I forgive every wrong thing that has been done against me and to me. I forgive and release those people in Jesus' name that have hurt me. I will not have any offense in any room in my life for hurt, but I proclaim forgiveness right now in Jesus' name because you have forgiven me. And then now I come and I surrender to you. I surrender. I surrender control. I surrender my control. I surrender all those things that I will want to hold to myself and question and doubt. And I say, no, I trust you. I trust you and I surrender now. Then lastly, oh, Father God, I come to you. I thank you for the promise of the Holy Spirit. I can't gain it. I can't earn it. You've given it. You've given it as a gift. So Holy Spirit, I ask you now in Jesus' name, Holy Spirit, will you fill me? Come, fill me. Baptize me. Baptize me, fill me, completely fill me. Not just the front room or the second room, but fill my entire house. I ask for that infilling to come right now in Jesus' name over my life. I surrender to you, fill me, fill me. Have your way, whatever way. Move in my life, move in my life. I'm open for you in Jesus' name. Father, I pray now for every person that has just prayed this prayer. I pray faith arise. Holy Spirit, will you come? Will you come and move? I see you moving, Holy Spirit, even upon marriages right now. I believe even where there's been hurt and there's been brokenness, you are repairing fractures. You're repairing damage. You're coming and repairing innocence that was stolen. Right now, you're coming and breaking people free, even from hurt and that brokenness. And today, you're bringing wholeness. Holy Spirit, will you move? Holy Spirit, will you move in this moment? Even now, empower your people. Holy Spirit, more of you, I ask. More of you, will you come right now into homes, into settings, into private situations, into gatherings, wherever you are right now. Holy Spirit is coming. He's coming right now. He's touching your hearts, touching your minds. He's renewing you. Even a new boldness upon you, church, for this year. A new boldness upon your life. A new boldness to go out into this world in power. He's coming right now and he says, receive me. So receive the Holy Spirit right now. Receive him. He's coming even in, in like floods. He's coming right now. He's dripping. He's coming into your house, into your place, into your place of loneliness. He's coming right now. The Holy Spirit is ministering right now. So come, Holy Spirit, have your way. Move in power. Ooh, today is a new day. Today is a new day. A day of being filled with the Holy Spirit. So right now I declare this in Jesus' name. Continue moving. Continue moving in Jesus' name. In Holy Spirit, you're welcome here. In Holy Spirit, church he's here he's here oh he's here come on let's raise our faith and sing these words out together in holy spirit you are welcome here come flood this place and fill the atmosphere Church, would you raise your faith in this moment? Perhaps close your eyes and reach out your hands. Lift them up. Maybe you want to get on your knees. But in this moment, I'm believing that the Holy Spirit is going to fill your house, your home, your room, your venue right now. He's here. Let Him in. Let Him move. Let Him overwhelm. If you want to be filled by the Spirit for the very first time, or fresh in this moment, would you believe and pray?
pray that prayer that Pastor G walked us through just then. And right now, if that's you, I'm praying and prophesying. Spirit, come. Spirit, move. I believe right now, people, you're overwhelmed by Him from head to toe. Lord, come and baptize people in your presence right now for the very first time in bedrooms, living rooms, homes, and kitchens all around the world. Spirit, come. Spirit, move. By your presence in your power. Close your eyes around the world. There's some different things on my heart as I was praying in preparation for this moment. I believe there's some of us that long to know the Holy Spirit like this, but our minds get in the way. Our thoughts run and race. It's like we can't seem to receive Him because of the freneticness in our minds right now I believe that as I pray some of us God wants to move by freeing your mind I believe he wants to bring peace to your mind so that he can flow into and through you like never before so if that's you would you respond where you are respond by opening out your hands close your eyes in this moment and in the name of Jesus I speak the breath of peace to your mind. Every doubt, every question be gone. I speak an emptying right now. I believe it. I believe it. People are experiencing peace in their minds for the very first time. Now, Holy Spirit, come and fill, 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 fill. I even believe there's people going down in the Spirit right now for the very first time because He's brought peace to your mind. Spirit, fill. Let Him come in. Maybe you need to take a seat. Let him come in. Open your hearts. Let him overwhelm. Let him fill you like never before. Father, come. Father, come. Maybe some of you, you're praying with your friends and family, people responding. Would you lay your hands on them? Would you pray in tongues in this moment? I believe there's people right now, free in your mind for the very first time. Free in your mind. Free in your mind. Filled again. to believe that there's some couples there's been strife within your relationship maybe it's significant maybe it's just been that little bit of tension recently and I just was praying and believe that there's some couples who are going to receive the Holy Spirit together afresh and for the first time today so if that's you as a couple you know that you need a fresh filling or a filling for the first time I want to ask you to hold hands and with the other hand raise it up and right now in the name of Jesus I speak a filling in the name of Jesus over married couples over couples in the name of Jesus right now come move I pray an overwhelming move of the God of all ages the creator himself over you we breathe his presence right now come on I believe there's some couples you're experiencing the Holy Spirit like never before God, I believe there's some moments you're going to fall back even right now in the name of Jesus. As He moves, He's going to come like waves in your room. And again, there's another wave of Him. He breathes into you, into your marriage, fresh unity, fresh love, fresh forgiveness. 
Right now, forgiveness flowing in homes between husbands and wives. Pray out and declare right now. Fresh unity. Even believe over some marriages in this moment that there's a Holy Spirit fills you. It's a purification moment. Fresh forgiveness right here, right now. I see it. I see it. I even believe that there's some of us as couples, we've been behaving in ways that haven't honored God. Sinful things, perhaps we've given into even as couples right now as he comes in, repent, like Pastor G said, repent and invite him in to bring holiness into your home, holiness into your life, holiness into your relationship, holiness into your immediate and your future. I even believe right now that some of you couples are getting fresh vision, new nations, new ventures being birthed in you as a couple. In Jesus' name. And finally, I wanted to, us to pray over our children in this moment for a filling of the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, don't hold them back. He said, bring your children, bring the little children to me. So right now, all around our movement, whether you have children or not, Maybe yours are grown up and left home. Perhaps you are pregnant in this moment. Maybe you're single, not yet married. I want to ask every single one of us to pray for the children in our movement that the Holy Spirit would fill them now. Fill them now. Fill them now. Come on, Lord. Fill them now. Fill them now, Lord. Fill them now. Fill them now. Fill them now. Fill them now. now. given us the space and the opportunity to be filled yes, with the Holy Spirit. And I know that there will be countless numbers of people that have been impacted and receive something special and impactful That's on right. the back of today's message. And so we'd love to hear from you. Yes. As this email comes up on the bottom of the screen, send us an email, send us a message. We'd love to hear from you. There'll be a group of people that would love to pray with you and bring the conversation further. Come on. Thank you for joining us today. Come back next week. Yes. Part three, Upper Room. It's going to be amazing. Have a great week, church.